the cheapest way to ship internationally with tracking, a beginner's guide. International shipping information is difficult to find and filled with many pit holes, but the possibilities are lucrative. The world is huge, and so shipping internationally is something that is very uh, important. It's very important, especially if you have a business and you do want to extend extend your business out to the rest of the world, not just the United States. So whether um, you want to just ship to your granny in Kuala Lumpur, or if you want to ship to China, Australia, or even Russia, maybe, to expand your business, well, we're going to be talking about that. And uh, we're going to talk a lot about a lot of things. What we're not going to talk about is every possible shipping scenario that's out there because that just uh, <laughs> this video would be like I don't know a thousand hours so but what we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna be I'm gonna define it a little bit here we're gonna talk about the cheapest way to ship internationally which is gonna be we're gonna be talking about with uh, USPS and there's certain restriction with that and we're gonna be talking about that quite a bit now I've done a lot of work shipping myself and also trying to condense this information down to this video and we're going to be talking about a few things i have a chart here on the article so i wrote this article and i'm using and i'm creating a video to kind of supplement it because there's so much information i figured i'd do both now what we're going to be talking about is this right here i condensed all this information down to this table here which i've which i'm going to be calling well i'm going to call it table but the method i'm using i'm going to be calling it the max cost shipping method for international shipping let me make this a little bit bigger here. so we're going to be talking about this chart and it is it looks like a lot of information this is actually going to be really easy to understand once i go through all the steps in the rest of this article so with that being said we're going to go ahead and get started with step number one first class mail international which is right here First Class Mail International, max $35. We're gonna be talking about this number in great detail. So one of, so the range, the price range for shipping out of the United States to another country, we're gonna say it's uh, you know, minimum one ounce to four pounds. Uh, let me step back real quick. So First Class Mail International shipping is the cheap, cheapest way to ship internationally from USPS, I think from anywhere, any even FedEx and uh, UPS, but it's the cheapest. And the reason it's the cheapest is because it's a stripped down version of many of the other shipping service that they have. So there's a lot of, it's constrained and it doesn't have a whole lot of bells and whistles, which we'll talk about. So actually I'll just touch on it briefly. It, the max is four pounds. If, you, if it goes over four pounds, you got to go different shipping method, which we'll talk about in step number two. So it's a four pound max. There is a $400 limit to the items, the value of the items in there. There is, there is limited tracking, meaning there's only tracking to some countries, not all countries, which is kind of rough. And also, um, there's actually no insurance, sorry, and no insurance for the shipping service. Now, that is a deal break. It could be a deal breaker for some people, and it's a deal breaker for some items. But we'll go into deep detail, to depth about it and things that you can do in order to um, get around it. Now... Um, to touch back here for first class mail, it, the way first class mail works, it's a, it's a spectrum, right? The more, ex, the heavier it is, the more expensive it is. And so the highest would be, you know, four pounds at 58 bucks now, and the cheapest at $10. So from 10 to 58, so one ounce to four pounds. Now you're saying 58, wait a minute, you said max 35 over here. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So first class mail is again, it's a spectrum. Um, the next one I want to talk about real quick, I'm going to lump all these together real quick, is Priority Padded Flat Rate Envelope. And I got one of those here. Let me, let me maximize the screen for a minute. Okay, that is not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that. This is a padded flat rate envelope that I got for free from the post office. It's a whole lot of room. I got that. And that, to ship internationally, it's one cost. So if it's a one ounce item or four pounds you can fit in that bag, it's going to be $34 to anywhere in the world that USPS ships to, which is nice. It's very important. We're going to talk a lot, we're going to talk a lot about flat rate items. So I'll just remember 34 And for a small flat rate box, it's going to be 35 It's a dollar more, but it's smaller. Like a flat rate box is like that big. You can fit like three of them in here, perhaps three, maybe four. Don't, though. Don't put... 
don't use a small flat rate box and then put it in a flat rate envelope. They don't like that. It's against the rules, so don't do that. If, you're, if you are going to put a box in the flat rate envelope, make sure you make it out of your own cardboard. Okay, now why did I talk about that? The reason I'm lumping these three together is because USPS pretty much lumps them together. They're going to treat them, USPS treats three, all three of these here, right? First class mail, uh, the envelope, flat rate envelopes, and small flat rate, small flat rate boxes together. Um, with they, they lump them together, they treat them the same, even though the, the 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 only difference they have is just the price, right? Just get that in. We'll I'll go over why that is in just a minute. So we're gonna go over the cheapest way to use this since we have all this information now. We're gonna I'm gonna use this. This is this is a this is a padded mailer that I usually ship with. Usually domestically, I have shipped things internationally with this item. Here, let me give you a better look. Just a smaller padded mailer, bubble mailer. Maybe like, uh, you know, sometimes I ship little books or maybe little toys or video games in it. And I will, we'll call this just something just to represent first class mail. Now, let's say you have an item in here, right? Let's say, um, actually, let's go through, sorry about that. Maybe I'm all over the place here. But we're let's talk about an example real quick just to get you oriented and how to actually find out what the cost is. So here I have an example, right? I got a one pound laptop would cost $15.50 to ship to Canada using first class international service. So let's go ahead. I got a link here, right here. We're going to do that. I'm going to show you this example. Hopefully it'll help you out if you want to do this on your own at some point in time. We're going to go to Canada. Here's the value. Remember, we were talking about values earlier. We're just going to use $50 right now. We'll talk about maximum values. And then we're going to go calculate. And then I think I said a pound. And then we're going to go package. And then I'm going to use this zip code and the destination postal code, they call it. You can look it up, anyone, if you, whatever you want for Canada's right there. I just use that one. And it's going to calculate how much it's going to cost to ship there using different shipping services. We're not going to talk about all these. These, you know, they list the most expensive and the fastest ones first. This video is basically just the, the cheapest way and it's a beginner's guide. And as you can see here, $15.50 and then it goes up. Anyway, $15.50. I just wanted to show you how to come up with that number that I have here. So $15.50. Here it is $15.50. $15.50 for a one pound item. Let's say I put I can put a laptop in here. This is just to represent first class mail. It could be a box, whatever the case may be. So let's say I, I want to ship something in here. If it was a pound, it's gonna cost me fifteen dollars fifty cents to ship to Canada. It's gonna cost a different price if I want to ship it to another country, but let's just say we're just using Canada. But let's say it's it uh, we don't want to do one pound, maybe two pounds or three pounds, whatever it ends up being. Let's say the cost is gonna be um, let's say four pounds, right? Because we have an example here. If this, right, let's say we ship a four pound package, it's going to cost $58, right? If the package, whatever we want to put in first class mail, if it ever goes over $34, we don't want to use first class mail anymore. We want to use priority flat rate envelope because it's 34, right? You have an option. You can, you can ship that item using first class mail for 58 bucks, or you can go at 34 cheapest is going to be 34 or if you want you can ship it in the priority small flat rate box if you want so that right there shows you how to ship what's the, the the cheapest way to ship an item that's four pounds and under internationally very important we're going to be talking about more about that um items that fall outside of that meaning something that's over four pounds in just a minute in in step two but we're not at step two yet Right now, what I want to do is I want to talk about some of the restrictions. So some of the, there's going to be tons of restrictions, man. There's so many restrictions and it is, it is difficult to navigate, but I think I've got, got them all condensed down here and easy, easy to understand for, um, well, if it's easy to understand for me, um, it shouldn't be a problem for you guys, I hope. Anyway, so here it is. So some of the restrictions that we're going to be having, now these restrictions are going to apply for all three, uh, first class mail, Priority, the flat rate envelope, and the small flat rate box. It's going to apply for all of them. That's USPS just kind of treats all three of these equally. 
they're not equal if it's domestic. If domestic is different. I have a video on that. If you want to check that out, go ahead. But for internationally, it lumps them all three together. So these are the restrictions it's going to it's going to apply to all three of them. So the max weight limit for these shipping methods is going to be four pounds. Right? We talked about that. And here's actually a link I have to USPS's website, and it'll show you that. Give you some proof here. So here's some of the shipping methods. We're not going to talk about all these, just a few. First class mail. And we're going to be talking about right here. So it gives you two different weights. This is 3.5 ounces. That's for like postcards, I believe. And then here's the pounds, which is four pounds. As you can see, there's four pound is the max for first class mail. And it goes all the way down. And here are the names of the actual countries. Hopefully you can, you can see that in the video. But here are the countries and it goes it goes pretty far. So you always want to check your country to see if it is if the, the max weight is four pounds. Usually it's four pounds. But make sure you check. The next restriction, max maximum size. So there's certain sizes that will that USPS has that will allow you to get out, you know, to ship internationally. And this is this is what this is the generic here that I have. So it's a combined length, height, and width of 36 inches. And there's some more for tubes also. If you look here, it has some more of that information. And you can always get all this information from USPS. It's hard to navigate, but once you start getting in there, you'll, you'll figure it out. So max value, $400. Um, as soon as the value of the item that you're declaring, right? If you declare, if you declare it over $400, then they won't let you use first class mail, which means you're going to have to go to the next shipping method, which is going to be more expensive. So it's going to be up to you if you want to declare 400 or not. I don't know if they ever, I don't know if you could put in there like 200 and then for them, and then someone will go, no, this is actually more. And then they kick it back to, you. I don't know. I've never had that happen. Now, according to the website, this shipping service is anywhere from seven to 21 days, but it's not guaranteed. I think it's seven to 21 business days. I don't remember it saying business days, but it could be that. And it is not guaranteed. So it could take two months. It could take three. Whenever I shipped to Canada, it'd take about maybe seven days, depending on where I was in Canada. It was actually pretty easy. It's usually easier to ship to Canada. Whenever I shipped to Australia, it was like two weeks. Um, when I shipped to Russia, it was like maybe a little over two weeks. It wasn't that bad. But I have heard some people say that they, it actually take it's taken longer for things to get through customs in Russia. Uh, from, from what I understand... People are telling me there's only one customs um, office in Russia for the whole of Russia. Russia's huge. It's ginormous. And if, if it's true, it's just one custom office one, and they have a lot of work to do. So it could take a few months for it to go through. Now, a few months when it's like you're shipping it to like your, you know, a family or, uh, or friends there, it might not be that big of a deal. They'll be willing to wait. But let's say it's due to business, right? You have a business contact over there. For them to wait for two months, it might be... A little rough um, I know if when I was shipping on eBay uh, there's only a few countries that I shipped internationally because I didn't want the hassle of maybe people leaving me negative feedbacks or whatever but I mean if it's your business if you have your own website and you're shipping and if you just tell them ahead of time it might take a long time they, they might be good with it so delivery time tracking okay now this could be a deal breaker depending on what it is you're selling or who you're shipping it to now, tracking is only included for this shipping service or for, you know, the three I was talking about earlier. It's only limited to a small set of countries, not every country. Here, let's take a look here. Here is the country list. When I first started shipping internationally a few years ago, it was less than half of this, right? So all these new countries in here, like Mexico was in there when I was doing it. I don't think Turkey was in there. Nope, this was not, that country wasn't in there. Anyway, so there's a good amount of them. Now, just because it says that they will, that country has an agreement with the, the post office that they will do tracking doesn't mean that they're going to do it well. I've had a few countries in which I shipped to and then the track, once it got out of the United States and into that country, tracking really didn't update all that much. And I've had some issues. It's, it's so frustrating whenever you lose a package or not you, not you, not me, but when it's out in the ether, for some reason or another, the tracking just, it's gone. You don't know where it is. It's so frustrating. So just keep that in mind. Also, make sure you check the USPS website because countries, like I said, it was half of this. And um, it's very possible that some of the ones that, that I started with aren't here anymore. So always check to make sure that it does if you are interested in having tracking on your package. 
Next, here's another possible deal breaker for you guys. Insurance. Insurance is not available. Let me repeat that here. Insurance is not available for this service. So if your package, you ship your package, it, oh, it's so frustrating having all that time to get the product listed online, people purchase it, you box it, and you ship it out, and you do all the right things, and then, let's say, it just disappears, right? From It goes from the United States, and then it goes to whatever country, and then it's just tracking doesn't update, it's gone. Oh, so frustrating. It, there's no insurance, so it's that's it. It's on you. You might have to refund your customer or whatever the case may be. I've had, I've actually had two instances when I shipped to Australia. It was at the same time. It was like a week apart. I ship it to Australia and the tracking, you know, the U.S. Uh, on the on the U.S. post office, it shows it leaving the United States. And then I'd go on to the Australian post office to check there. And there it just, it said it would never arrived to Australia, which was frustrating. It was two around the same time. The customers, I, had, I contacted the customers like, hey, you know, I'm so sorry. It looks like it's taken a while. And it took so long that I was like, hey, you know, I'm so sorry. I ended up having to refund them and it was a good amount of money. I didn't like that. But that's, since it's lost and there's no insurance, I couldn't get repaid for any of that. But that's just something for you to know. It might not be that big of a deal if it's like a smaller priced item. Who knows? So no insurance. Next, custom form. So this custom form is for the shipping methods that I was talking about earlier. The other shipping methods in step two will require a different form. So this is very important. Here is a set, and here, here's a link to many different custom forms. Here, as you can see, this is 2976. This is 2976A. These letters at the end are very important depending on what it is you're shipping with. So this is just the 2976, no letter after it. Make this a little bit bigger here. Here is the custom form you want for first class mail and or the other flat rate items I was talking about earlier. Now this is where, this is the one that they provide where you download and you fill it out by hand. Whenever I had to fill out mine, whenever I had to purchase mine, let's say through eBay or through my own site, it was already pretty much all filled out for me because eBay has my address, has the customer's address, it has the name of the the item, the weight, and all that, that was already input into eBay ahead of time. So much of this was filled out for me. Also, it didn't look like this. I mean, this is this could be just an older version. And always make sure you, you have the, the newest version. But here's this one. We'll go over it a little bit to get you familiarized. But here, right, you know, puts your information on here, your address, telephone number, email, the the place in which you're shipping it to. It's, it's important, too, if you're shipping it to a country that doesn't use um, the letters that we're familiar with, so maybe it's like Japan or maybe somewhere in um, in China, you might want to use some of their characters on there because you never know the person, the post office might not be able to read it. That's just a, an extra little tip. Right here, you can put the name of the item you're shipping. So I think in this example, where, what do we say? We said laptop, right? So you just put laptop on here, quantity one, weight, one pound or whatever you want. Value here again. Remember, if you if you put over 400, they they might not let this package go through. So you want to put the value here. H S tariff. Now this is a question you probably you guys are gonna have um, because it's gonna relate to customs fees and a bunch of other things. Now it's depending on the code that you put in there, it's gonna determine what the custom fees are. Now it's very complicated. There's a lot of work to do in order to really get that code. But don't worry, you don't need it. Typically, I leave a blank. Why? Because it just takes so much time. Then just I just let the customs officer at the destination country fill that in, and you know they'll take care of it. So it's it's not the biggest deal. We'll talk more about it in just a minute. I have another, I have a bullet point on that. Um, so we'll we'll leave that alone for the time being. Country of origin. That's where the item was was um, created. So if it was made in China, you put it here. Made in Japan, whatever. Sometimes the sticker falls off the product, so I'll I'll leave that. I'll say unknown on there and it'll be fine usually i usually don't have any issues now once you have all that filled out it's very important that you sign it and date it because if you don't sign it and date it they might not accept it and yeah so make sure you do that there's been i think it's like one or two times where i i i remembered at the last minute like right before i was about to tape it all onto the box oh wait a minute there's no signature and i put it on there so that that's very important this is the custom form now this form is typically it, it 
whenever I printed it out from uh, from eBay, it came out on a half sheet, right? A half sheet of paper. I don't have a paper. Anyway, it's like, you know, it's a full sheet of paper and then half sheet and then whatever that thing is that goes on the box or on uh, on this guy. Usually it'll fit like right here. So what that means is that your package, the package you're shipping has to be a minimum the size of the custom form because if the the box or whatever the package is smaller, then, you know, you'd have to like wrap the the label around it, their customs form around it. Don't do that. Do not wrap the customs form around. Don't bend it around the box or the package because they don't like that. They won't. It might not go through. So make sure that your box or your whatever package you're putting it on is at least the size of the customs form. Very important. All right. Let's see here. Okay. That is the customs form for first class mail. Now, customs fees. The customs fees are paid by the person receiving the package. So let's say you ship it to Canada. The Let's say you leave the, the HS code, the HS tariff code blank, right? Um, it ships, gets shipped to Canada. The Canada Canadian customs agent will look up the code. They'll put the code in and they'll determine on a few other factors what the customs fees is going to be. And then whenever the, let's say your customer gets told that the, the, you know, let's say they have to go to the post office, they have to pay whatever the customs fee in order to receive the package, right? Now, because we don't have all the information ahead of time, we don't know what it's going to be. So usually when I ship things abroad, I usually have a little statement on there saying, I don't know what the customs fees are going to be. You're going to have to pay them. Um, the, a rough guess is maybe, you know, I don't know. I could say 10 or 15% or whatever the value you put on the item is. That's not 100%, but but anyway, you don't have to worry as much about that because usually when someone wants an item in a different country is because they can't get it there. So they're willing to pay a little bit more. I know it's a little rough to say, but that's just the way it is. Now, if someone does want to figure out, you can't figure out what the HS tariff code is. It just takes a lot of work. And if I want to do that, it'd have to be a completely different video and, and another article explaining it. And even let's say even if you do put the code in there, and then you figure out the custom fees. It's very possible that the custom agent at the destination country could just change it. And well, there's nothing you could do because they're the final say, they have the final say on what it's going to be. So that's custom fees. Next thing we want to talk about is shipping supplies. So whenever you use first class mail, you have to use your own supplies. Just like I showed you the, the bubble mailer that I have, right? This um, I got to pay for that. Or if I buy my own box, I got to pay for that. But if I if I want to use like a padded fly rate envelope or the small fly rate boxes, I can actually get those for free online or from the USPS website or actual a post office. And I'll get you that. All right. So now that we got that, let's talk a little bit more. Let's do a little recap. And we're going to use the max cost shipping table that I had. We're going to review that a little bit. Help maybe solidify some of this information. So here we go, we have, here's the stuff we just talked about. So here's step one, max $35. Remember, that's the max you wanna pay for first class mail. And if the if the item ever goes over 35 bucks, then you wanna jump it down to this padded fly rate envelope. Right here, you get 34, or you can use a small fly rate box. And here's some limits here, so it's a max of four pounds. There's some tracking, remember we talked about that. No insurance available. And again, max four pounds for all those. So now that we went over that, this is a little easier to understand. If you ever just need a quick glance at a table, you could just look at this and this will tell you more or less where you should be. Now, the reason I talk about, the reason I boil this down, not just to make it simple, but also it's a easy way to remember, like let's say, let's say if I wanna ship something abroad and a customer says, hey, how much is this gonna be? And I know, let's say I have an item, I know it's gonna be under four pounds, right? Let's say whatever, let's say this. <laughs> Say I got one of these, right? The customer wants this. They go, how much ship are going to be? I go, oh, I know it's under four pounds. And I'll just tell the customer, hey, it's going to be 34. At, at the at the most, it's going to be $34. And the customer will go, hey, okay, I am interested. And then I can go in and start calculating shipping. It's just a, I guess you could say it's a rule of thumb or max cost shipping method rule of thumb. All right. So now we did a little review. Now we're going to move on to step number two. Priority Mail International, and the max here is 
So now we're moving from first class mail to priority. Now what's going to happen is you get a little bit extra perks with this, right? Here you can, you're able to ship up to 70 pounds is the max up to 70. And there is more tracking and actually there are, there is insurance options, not to every country, but to some countries. But and also another perk is that you could actually get there faster. And let's talk about that. Now, this is not including the ones we talked about earlier, the padded flat rate envelopes and the small flat rate boxes. They, they're not included in here. USPS does not treat them the same when it goes to international. So let's talk about some of the ranges. Here we have, I put 4.1 in here because you can technically ship stuff that's, you know, one ounce priority mail, but it's going to most likely be cheaper using the first class, the step one. So I kind of just X that out, but you can, if you want to, but we're going to talk about everything higher than four pounds, right? Cause four pounds was the, was the, the, the top of the range for step one, first class mail. So we're going to talk about four pounds, 4.1 pounds, all the way to 70 pounds. Now the price range is $42 to 450 bucks. Wow. We don't want to do 450, right? So I, that's why I have this max of 96 on here. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. And that's going to be using non-flat rate. So pri priority, non-flat rate priority, is just like first class mail. It's a spectrum. The heavier it is, the more it's going to cost. And then we're going to talk about some flat rate options. But before that, I want to do an example here. The example I have here is a six pound car part, whatever generic car part you want to put in there. And let's say it's going to cost me, it'll cost me about $70 to ship it to Australia. So let's go ahead and do that. If you remember, this one here was for Canada. Let me start another one. We're going to go to Australia this time. Australia here, Australia. We, you don't want Austria. I've done that accidentally a few times trying to do some of this research. We're going to go with 50, let's do $50 again. That's fine. And we're going to go here. As you can see, there's many different options and I've condensed it down just a few, just to get you guys started again. This is a beginner's guide. We're going to click that and we're going to put, I think I said six pounds right here and oops, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. And here it is again. It's going to list it by, I think, the most expensive or at least the fastest shipping they have. Let's go to the bottom one and, oh, $75. What is that? $95? No way. Here it is. So the one that I was talking about here is $70. Bucks. You see, at this time, they didn't list it by cheapest. They listed by shipping types. So sometimes it could get confusing. So here it is, $70. Bucks. And what did I see over here? $70 right there for six pounds. So that's another example you can use if you ever trying to figure out what the cost is for priority. Now, let, let me go back there real quick. Here you can see it doesn't give the option for first class mail as it did for Canada, right? Remember this one's for Canada, we did earlier. Here it is, first class package. Reason being is that when we did the Canadian example, it was one pound, right? As soon as it goes over four pounds, right? In this example, it's six pounds, it doesn't give you that option anymore. So that's another way of knowing which kind of shipping services you can use. Okay, so $70, 70 bucks, and that's shipping it to Australia uh, for six pounds. And again, that's non-flat rate, it's just standard priority. If the package that you're shipping, let's say it goes to $80, well, you don't wanna use first class anymore. I'm sorry, you don't wanna use, scratch that, you don't wanna use standard priority anymore because the next shipping method you can use is a flat rate box. Remember, flat rate is very important. It helps figure out what the cutoff is. A medium flat rate box is gonna be $76. So if you have a package and you're trying to calculate it and it shows $80, well, might as well go to a medium flat rate. Medium flat rate, they have two different box sizes. This is a more of a square box and this is a rectangular kind of thin. You see it's a three inch, one of the dimensions. So that's $76. The only issue is that these flat rate boxes have a max weight of 20 pounds, as opposed to standard flat rate, I'm sorry, to standard non-flat rate, it's 70. We'll go over this in a minute. We'll look at the chart. It'll, it'll make more sense in just a second. So let's say 
you have an item that costs eighty dollars, right? And you go eighty bucks. Eh, I want to use the medium flyer rate because it's a little cheaper. But your item doesn't fit in here. So what are you gonna do? Well, it's eighty bucks. You don't want to go to here. So what you do is you just use standard priority to ship it. But if your item goes over ninety six, right? Let's say let's say it's four hundred fifty. It turns out you're four hundred fifty dollars for you to ship an item. You're not gonna pay four hundred fifty bucks. What you want to do is since it doesn't fit in here, you're gonna want to move to this one. Ninety six dollars. And that's how you find the cheapest way to ship internationally an item that's over four pounds. Right here. Now, if you you can see here, these are some of the sizes for the large flat rate. And this is the more square one, and this is the triangle, or I'm sorry, rectangular, and it's a little thinner. Anyway, so that's how you find the cheapest way to ship for an item that's over four pounds. I know it's it's confusing. Again, that's why I have that little table. We'll go over the table in a minute. But first, what I want to do is I want to talk more about the restrictions to see if your item will qualify. All right. We're, next thing we're talking about is the weight, the maximum weight you can ship it. And I kind of talked about that a little bit. So a non-flat rate priority mail international box is 70 pounds. So non-flat rate, just a standard priority. That's the one where it's on a scale, meaning the heavier it is, the more it costs. The maximum is 70 pounds, but the flat rate options, right? Priority mail, medium and large flat rate. The max weight is 20 pounds, which could get you in some trouble, especially if your item is over 20 pounds. You don't want to pay, let's say it's 70 pounds and you're going to pay 450 bucks. Mm. Again, this is a beginner's guide. It's not going to talk about every specific shipping method, but at least enough to get started. Okay, so that's the post office's restrictions. Now there's also a max restriction to the weight of the destination country. And here an example is the max weight limit for USPS is 70 pounds, but the Canadian max weight limit is 66. Let's take a look at that. I think I had this open earlier, didn't I? I did. Anyway, so we're gonna go to Canada. Canada here. And it is 66 pounds. Here, let me show you. Right here. So it's Priority Mail Express. Again, there's, there's, I know it's confusing. It took me a long time to get all this done. Again, I'm trying to condense it and make it easier for you guys. So Priority Mail Express International. It's price group max weight in pounds. So this is the weight. So that's 66 pounds, 44 pounds. As you can see, each country has different amount of weight. This has an NA, so it looks like maybe they just you can't ship to them because it's NA all the way down. Yeah, this one has an NA here, but so there's some countries in which certain services aren't allowed. So let's go back down to Canada, and here it is. Canada, 66 pounds. I think because I think they use the they use kilograms. I suppose that might be why these numbers are a little are different than our numbers. So there is the weight limit for USPS, and there's also the weight limit for the, the weight limit for the destination country that you have to worry about. Next, let's talk about delivery time. So what they're saying for this, for priority, right? For step two, priority shipping is six to 10 business days. Whenever, whenever I ship using priority that's non-envelope or small flat rate internationally, yeah, this is about right, six to 10. Some countries, it might be a little bit later delay. I'm not sure if it's guaranteed or not, meaning sometimes when they offer a guarantee, meaning they would actually re reimburse you for the shipping costs, which would be nice. So six to 10 business days, it's nice. Tracking is included to many, but not all countries where they ship to. And it's it's fine, I guess it's, I mean, what are you gonna do, right? If you want, you could pay more in shipping, but use maybe a different carrier like FedEx. Usually the countries I ship to that I need to ship to are usually have tracking. So that's usually not the biggest deal. Now, a plus using priority shipping is that there is insurance. It's included up to $200 to some countries. So what, what it means is that there's some countries where USPS doesn't ship to, so those don't count. And there's, there's also some countries where it might be less than 200 or it might be none at all. Also, there is more insurance offered. So just because it's $200 doesn't mean that, let's say to Canada, I think to Canada, um, you can ship, I think it's $200 to Canada. Well, I'll show you that in a minute. There's going to be, in step three, we're going to show you how to figure some of this stuff out here. Um, 
let's say you want to ship an item to Canada and it is worth over, right? $200. So you want to put more insurance on there. There's a max limit to which they can offer you. It might be like 2,500 bucks. It might be more, but there is an option. So that's, that's good. That's a plus. Next thing we're going to talk about customs forms. Remember how we were talking about customs forms earlier for first class mail is different than this custom form. And it'll also be different for different shipping methods, which we're not going to get into right now. But we're going to, let's talk about this one. So remember this, this one right here is the PS form 2976-A. So they added an A to this one. It's going to be the same website here where it gives you, you know, the PDFs where you can download if you want. But I got it here. And let's take a quick look. Let's make it bigger. It's going to be pretty similar to the other customs form just looks different. Again, this is the one where you're supposed to download and fill out the ones that I usually do are already done online. The main difference in this one is going to be that it comes on four sheets, four half sheets. I'm sorry. It's going to be two full sheets, sheets, which makes it four half sheets. Let's just make it easy. It's going to be four small sheets. The one you download off the internet, it's going to be five sheets. I'm not going to talk about that one. I don't have a lot of experience with that. I'm just going to talk about the ones that I usually do. And I'll just talk about eBay since a lot of people do a lot of shipping on eBay. So what happened, what would happen, let's say someone purchased something from me and it was, a, I, I scheduled it for priority shipping. It would be four pages for these custom form pages. And what I, and most of it would be filled out except for the stuff we talked about earlier, like the um, HS tariff number, the country of origin of the item, some of the values on there might, might want to change or whatever the case may be. But the difference here is since it's, it, they need four sheets, four. So whenever you, whenever you do end up printing them out from, let's say from eBay, I had to make sure everything was filled out. I make sure I sign each and every one of them. Now there's four, the four that they gave was, uh, I forget that they have specific names here. I'll show you here. Like down here, and this one says it's form one, customs declaration form. I only just put a picture of one, but the other one will have like a dispatch, you know, page, it'll be page two, dispatch form, and blah, blah, blah. And the fourth one that I would usually have would say customer copy. Now, you don't need to sign that one, but there's going to be something I want to talk about that you maybe should in just a minute. But anyway, I just want to get you oriented with the custom forms for priority. And let's see, is there anything else different? Oh, one thing I want to talk about here. This section was also in the first class and in step one, that custom form where it says gift. Sometimes you'll have customers. I had this in eBay. The customer I ship it to, or the, the customer that purchased it for me will send me a message and will say, hey, can you please mark it as gift? And the reason they wanted that is because if you mark it gift and it gets to the destination country, the person, the customs agent will will see that it's gift and they won't put a customs fee on it. There won't be that extra fee. And so the customer can actually get a little bit cheaper. Now, it's against the rules, maybe the law, probably. But when I was doing on eBay, I made sure I put a note on every one of my listings saying I won't do that because if eBay were to find out that I did do that, it could cost me my business, could cost you your business. And so it might not be a good idea for you to do that. But if you're just shipping it, like to, like I said earlier, to your granny, to your grams, to grand, you can put a gift on there and hopefully they won't charge you. Again, it's not 100% that they're going to do that. They might still charge anyway. All right, moving on. That is, so for prior, for the, for step one, for first class, it was only one sheet, right? There's only one customs form technically. For priority, there's actually two different types of forms. There's the this paper form, which comes in four sheets. I know it's complicated. It's a lot of, it's convoluted. They also want a customs envelope, except for they don't call it customs envelope. They call it the PS form. They call it a form. And this one's a 2976E. This one was a 2976A. This one's the 2976E. I think E probably stands for envelope, even though in the title it says form. And this is what it looks like right here. Let me open that up. That is the envelope. I took this picture. I put a little, you know, put the tape measure here, give you, gives you something to look at, but I have the actual one right here. 
Let me show you that. You can get this free from the website. I think they ship it to you free. I've done a while. It has a lot of different stuff on there if you come through. So what you do is with the forms earlier, we talked about earlier, the four forms. What you do is you're going to put them in here in order, you know, the, the number one on top, two and three. Um, they just believe they just require the first three in here. So, you know, you put that in here and this thing comes up. You put it in there and then it seals. It's hard to see. In there. And then what you do in the back here, it's adhesive. You see that right there? This is all, this is sticky. We'll do a little ASMR while we're <laughs> Sticky, you take both of these off. And then what you do is you put it on your box or on the package or whatever the case may be with the forms in here. Now, here's a tip that I'm going to give you guys. It's something that I kind of figured out. Whenever this, let's say the package gets shipped to the destination country, let's say, I think in this example, we said Australia. So we ship it to Australia. It's in the customs agent's office. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll come in here and they might take all the papers or they might just take one, but let's say they take all the papers. So now your package has the, this envelope on here, but it has no papers in it. And let's say the customs agent's agent forgets to put the papers back in, loses the papers, loses the box. Now there's just a, a box with no address or anything on it, just rolling around. They won't know what to do with it. It could get lost. What do you do? Right? So what I thought, what I, what I do now is, remember I said the, the customs form is four pages and the last one is a, cu a customer copy. What I do with that customer copy is I sign it. I sign every one of those and I date them all. And I'll put that, my, the customer copy, which is my copy, I'll put that on the side of the box, right? right? This is on the top and this is on the side. So I'll tape it to the side. So if that ever to happen where they were to somehow lose those custom forms from this envelope, the address will at least be on the side of it and hopefully get they'll get to wherever it needs to go. So that's just a an extra tip from me to you. Hopefully that saves a few packages. Packages. And it is mandatory. You have to use this envelope. You can't use your own envelope and you can't tape them on there. Mandatory. Just like this custom form is mandatory, so is this one, and so is the one for first class mail. And again, like like the other one, it your package, whatever package you're using, the minimum size has to be this size because they are not gonna if if your package is smaller than this, then you're gonna you're gonna want to like bend this over the side of the package. They don't want that. They don't like that. That might your customer might not get the package. So your package has to be at least minimum that size. Okay, what else we got here? Custom fees, just like before. I usually leave it blank. I'm sorry, I usually leave the HS tariff blank. And the custom agents will do it and they'll come up with the fees. And again, if there's enough want or need, maybe I'll make a video on that. <laughs> Might be like three people in the world that really want to know how to do that. So we'll see. Same thing, custom fees. Customer's gonna pay. Um, shipping supplies. So just like I said earlier, Shipping supplies, if you use your, you can use your own box if you want. It doesn't have to be a priority box. It could just be a, a regular, you know, cardboard box. But if you do want free shipping supplies, you can purchase them. Um, so you can get them for free at your post office or you can get them online plus free shipping. Okay. That is that. We're going to, we're going to go over the max cost shipping table one more time as a sort of review. Here it is. Here's step number two. For this is going to be the priority mail. The max is going to be $96. It's going to be max 70 pounds. There's some tracking and some insurance. Now we're going to start off with priority mail non-flat rate. That's going to be the cheapest for anything over four pounds. And something that's let's say 4.1 pounds is going to be 42 bucks all the way to 450. You don't want to pay 450. So what happens is as soon as it gets to 70 over 76 bucks, right? You want to use the medium flat rate. And if it ever goes over $96, then might as well just use the large flat rate box. And I hear I have some maximums here for this shipping service is 70 pounds. For this one's 20 and 20. And that is the max cost shipping method boiled down to one table. Hopefully it's bite-sized enough for you guys to be able to 
um, it, just to make it easier. And I know if you ever do have more questions, you can always look at the article and f pick up wherever, you know, custom fees and a bunch of other information. So now that we have those two steps, there is a third. So we want to talk about that right now since we did that. So step number three, restrictions and more. I know, I know what you're saying, but Abel, there were so many restrictions before. How many more restrictions can there possibly be? Well, 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 let's get into it. Restrictions. So there's two services that we're going through, right? We're going through the post office, the United States post office, and also the destination countries post office. So the first one we're going to look at is we're going to look at some restrictions from USPS. So prohibited domestic items are here. And then prohibited, prohibited items to ship internationally are here. Now these are this is the USPS's restrictions, not including the destination country. So let's say the destination country they allow cigarettes, post office does not. So you still can't ship it. Same with all these, and there might be more. Always check because they could always update this, right? So that's that. Next is the destination countries restrictions. So let's take a look at that. And here is that individual country list is what they call it. It is huge. Look at that. We're going to go with Canada again. I like talking about Canada. It's one of the easier places to ship to. And it's actually the cheapest country to ship to outside the United States. So I like to talk about that. Here is the full list of things that is required that you can ship to. So we'll, get, we'll get into that. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here. So prohibited items. You cannot ship any it says all alcoholic beverages, including wines, you cannot ship to it. Prohibited. Gold bullion, for some reason. Gold dust, can't ship. Plumage and skins of wild birds. Huh, that's interesting. Prison-made goods. Some of these are weird. I know Russia, I remember looking at Russia once, and it said that nothing that has that can transmit or receive a Wi-Fi signal, which means that you can't, I don't know if it's still the same, so don't quote me on this. You couldn't ship Cell phones, they had Wi-Fi. You couldn't ship PS3s or 4s at the time because they had Wi-Fi. You couldn't ship laptops. So it was, it's weird. So you make sure you look into this and, and determine if your item can and cannot. So that's prohibited. There's things I think the way this works is you cannot do at all. And then here are some restrictions, meaning you can as long as you abide by some rules. Banknotes, jewelries, coins sent in the form of collections. I don't know if bullion counts. Probably not. What else? Some observations. These are some things that specifically to Canada that they require you do. So this list is going to list everything on here. And we're just going to over just a little bit. Here are some of the shipping here. We'll go on to the ones that we were talking about here. Let's see. Priority mail. Right. We were talking about that. Here's some flat rate options. Remember I was telling you about four pounds. So that flat rate envelope and a small flat rate box. Four pounds is the max. We talked about that. It condensed that earlier for you guys and there's medium and large max is 20 pounds so as you can see i did a lot of work trying to get all this done well mainly for myself and then when i wanted to make an um, a video and, and an article it, it it just expanded to so much more but if you do want to get in depth for your country here it is oh, here's the 66 panel so and look at that there's more restrictions 22 pounds for canadian forces isn't that nice and then we get down all oh, for the insurance where is that insurance at Premier National Merchandise, first class. I think insurance would be in here. Commercial based pricing. Here's some limits to where you can ship or the size. And insurance. So insurance is probably one of these guys here. It'll tell you how much the insurance the post office gives you automatically, like that $200 number I gave you earlier. And to what limit they'll go up to higher, maybe 2500 or something like that. But like I said, there's so much stuff in here. And here's, oh, look at this. Four pounds. Remember I talked about that earlier for first class mail. Again, a lot of stuff going into this. So that's for Canada. Those are some of the Canadian restrictions on top of the USPS restrictions. And here I just did a little excerpt of some of the Canadian restrictions here. Here, here it is again. Plumage and skins of wild birds. They had an issue with, with that at some point in time. You... They must have or else it wouldn't be on there. All right. Restrictions change from time to time. Always check it. 
especially the destination country. Even if the, you know, you like to think that the post office has an up-to-date restriction list. It may not. So what you want to do is check the destination country's import restriction list from some government website just to make sure that the items you're trying to ship isn't going to be restricted. So that's, that's something that I recommend you do. All right, here we go. So we're going to talk about a few other things to kind of clean up some shop here. So if you remember earlier, um, we talked about items to ship and to not ship. Now, when I was doing the eBay, I don't do much of the eBay now, and I do some international shipping. Whenever I do international shipping, I have to realize that it there's a chance it might not get there. There's, first of all, when you ship domestically, you have to worry about that too, but there's things you can do. Whenever you ship internationally, some stuff's out of your hands, right? And so the, the threshold and what I do in order to decide if I want to ship stuff internationally is, do I mind losing it? And I know what you're thinking, you don't, you know, I don't want to lose anything, but it, it really depends. Like, let's say there's an item that I ship and, and let's say there's an item I'm thinking about maybe offering to ship international and it only costs, it might cost me like 15 bucks or maybe $10, right? I'll lose out on 10. Maybe I paid $10 for the item and some customer is going to pay me 20 or 30 and plus the shipping or whatever. I'm like, eh, if I if it gets lost, no big deal. I refund it. Not not an issue. But let's say so so that's an item maybe I'll be willing to do. No no problem. Plus we already know how much is, the max is going to cost me for first class, right? And I can figure all that out easy, all done. So I don't I don't have to go through and do all the work and then decide I don't want to. Anyway, so if it costs me ten bucks, no big deal. But let's say it's it's going to cost me a hundred dollars if I lose it. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know. And if I did, I'm not going to ship that first class mail because there's no insurance. If I did, I'd ship it priority so that I do get covered, but then I won't ship it to every country. So what I would do is I would go into eBay and I'd go into um, international shipping. I'll only choose countries in which the insurance will apply to. And typically those are like, you know, Western countries, Australia, Canada. Uh, the UK, things like that. And if you want to start getting into like Asia, it might get a little iffy. So so there's things you can do, right? There's certain steps you can take to decide if you do want to or don't. I recommend if you're going to do it, at least try Canada. It's the easiest one. It's it's to the north. It's it's simple. It's actually the cheapest country. It's practice with them and then you can start doing the world. Because if you want, you know, if you really want to extend your business, you really do want to start shipping abroad because, I mean, the world's huge, right? It is huge and there's people that want goods on the other side of the world. All right, so that's that. Next thing, future proof. Shipping pricing. Okay, so f what I mean by future proof is that the prices, the shipping prices that I put on, on the website and on this video, they're gonna change, right? Post office changes all the time. Like It seems like every year they raise the prices. But let's say the prices do end up going up which inevitably, inevitably will happen. They'll usually go up at the same rate. So this would be a dollar more for everything. So let's go into this. So let's say they charge a dollar more for everything. That means all these numbers that I have in here are going to be off by a dollar or whatever, but they're all going to go up at the same rate. So meaning this shipping service is always going to be the cheapest and then this one and then this one and same for these. So the relative position is going to stay the same but just the prices will change. Now, what I could do is I could, you know, um, if they do change, I could update it, I guess, if um, if that's uh, necessary, if that's what people want, I could change that. Now, the, the numbers in the video won't change because I can't change the video unless I make a new video, but at least you have that, right? So, future proof. And that's that. Next, next thing I want to talk about is, what do I got here? Online shipping. So the post office doesn't allow you to purchase shipping directly off your site. You have to do that click and ship thing or whatever it is. I think I've tried it once or twice a long time ago. It was okay. Or you can, if you have your own shipping methods, like say eBay or Amazon or whatever the case may be. But let, let's say you want, um, you have your own website and you want to buy shipping online. You can, there's a third party websites in which you can do that. And actually the discounts for shipping using that is actually a lot better. They're called the commercial rate shipping. And you get up to 20% off which is very important, especially if you're trying to, you know, keep a business, start a business, you want to save as much as possible. So the 20% could be the difference between existing and not existing as a business. So it's very important. Now I have a link 
uh, an affiliate link on my article that if you click on, if you you know purchase service through that link, I get a I get some bonuses which will help me out and get me to do more of these videos and more high quality stuff where it you know really gets into the details and uh, really help people out. But yeah, so um, if you do have like when I was on eBay, I had I was top rated seller. And one of the benefits of being a top rate seller is they give you discounts on shipping, which was nice because it was like 20% cheaper than it would be for other people, which gave me a good advantage, 20% advantage for shipping, which is awesome. So if you do want to get the cheapest, find out what the cheapest um, way to ship a package internationally, you're going to want to do that. So make sure you go to the website and do that. All right, next, I do have a video for the cheapest way to ship a package domestically. Check that out. And, uh, and one more thing, one last thing. I'm going to ask from you guys one one big favor. If you can, click that like button. Smash that like button. Just click, click, click. Can't click it enough. It will definitely help me out, help promote this video. It'll get it out to thousands of other eyeballs out there. And uh, hopefully it'll help them with it, with shipping. Because I know, I know I needed it. And I'm really happy that I made this video. And if you do have any other questions, which I know you will because it's shipping and has it deals with... I didn't talk about every possible shipping method. There's a possibility that you're going to be in a position in which I, I something I didn't say, but I might be able to help you out with. So add those, you know, write, ask me a question in the comments. If I know, I'm, you know, I'll try and answer it to the best of my ability. But other than that, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for sticking into this video. I think I've been talking for about an hour. Wow. Amazing. Thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.